five, four, three, two, one. Covering the news and events for the weekend on Friday, February 25th, 2022. I'm your host, Aaron Taylor. College students from across the state converged on the state capitol Thursday morning in an attempt to bring attention to funding for public colleges and universities in Alabama. Georgia Clark has the story. Troy University Student Government Association and Freshman Forum made their way up to Montgomery Thursday morning to rally for higher education. Higher Education Day urges Alabama lawmakers to provide more state funding to Alabama's 14 public universities. These universities are a valuable part of Alabama's economy. Our public universities are the largest economic contributor to the state of Alabama, and we have 180,000 students who choose to invest in our campuses. So we want to make sure that those who are making policy, those who are making decisions about funding, really have a chance to talk to those students because students are graduating with a lot of debt these days and they want to make sure that they have the best possible opportunities and that's a that's a real that's a, a cooperative effort between our policymakers and our campuses and that's what we're doing we're having those conversations to let students share that message not only is higher ed day a great way to network in the political arena it also brings a lot of other opportunities to student leaders i think it's very important for our leaders to come out here and show why it's important that troy is a great school why students should come to troy and why we would like more funding to be able to do great things at Troy so that we can have more opportunities to be able to grow, to get more opportunities so we can give back to the state of Alabama and to supply the jobs and things like that. Uh, overall, we come here to be able to show our Trojan pride, to show why One Troy and what One Troy means. And I think we have a group of 44, 45 people today showing exactly why people should come to Troy and why we should get more of our percentage of the uh, state budget. During the event, students took to the streets and were led to the State House by Alabama State University's marching band. Each of the 14 SGA presidents signed the Higher Education Pledge Board, which brings together each school's efforts and initiatives towards better funding. This event even brought together some notorious Sunbelt rivals. Following the march, students attended a luncheon and heard from senators who are working to pass higher ed funding legislation. Governor Ivey also spoke and expressed the hope she has for Alabama's future. To see all of you here today passionately advocating for what you believe in shows me that Alabama is in great hands going forward. And our best days are sure just ahead. Legislators and student leaders alike stress the importance of coming back to Alabama. Alabama suffers from what is known as brain drain, where most college graduates leave the state after receiving their diplomas and never return. Retaining college-educated individuals is a vital part of bettering Alabama. With budget talks said to begin next week, little resistance is expected in the passing of a new higher education bill. It's in the House right now, and so when it comes back up to the Senate, then it depends on how long the House has that. Then after the House brings it through committee, then up to the floor, and I'm not sure where that is in the House. But when it comes to the um, uh, comes to the Senate floor, it'll pass pretty quick. The senators are behind this bill and are excited about it. We shift from improving higher education to a program that is helping improve the lives of young children through literacy. This week, the Short the Squirrel Literacy Program celebrated its second year with a Mardi Gras themed graduation ceremony. Zeta Ingram has the story. The 22nd day of the second month in 2022 was Short the Squirrel's second birthday celebration. We really are celebrating his second birthday on 2 22 we're also celebrating Mardi Gras. And it doesn't stop there because the literature loving squirrel had a two in one celebratory event due to also graduating from the Idea Bank in downtown Troy. We are excited to celebrate Short's second birthday party, but we are also excited about Short's graduation from the Idea Bank and he will be transitioning into the Pike County Economic Development Center. Short's big move called for an event that was filled with all of his friends, goodies, and giveaways after a day of him traveling across the state to multiple schools for sharing his message. By taking short into communities and into schools, we're giving children the gift of seeing a character come to life. And so from the page, from the videos to 
in reality, the same message is reiterated three ways, and that is waiting time is reading time, and Short loves you, and Short wants you to read. And that's why Short and his team do what they do. The Idea Bank has helped Short on his journey tremendously, and that is a huge reason to celebrate. Well, the fact that two ladies and a six-foot squirrel have accomplished their five year strategic plan in 18 months goes to show you that things can really happen quickly. The whole idea of helping with literacy and improving reading in our state is just is our mission. If you'd like to learn more about Short the Squirrel or how you can help Short with his mission, visit shortthesquirrel.com. Zeta Ingram Troy, Trojan Vision News. A year's worth of school memories is available annually to Troy University students through the Palladium Yearbook. However, in recent years, there haven't been as many people showing up to say cheese. As Claudia Peppenhorst shows us, the yearbook staff is working on ways to get as many Troy students as they can in the next yearbook. Say cheese, spring picture day is upon us again. Troy students got their chance to be featured in this year's upcoming Palladium through Picture Day and were able to reminisce on the previous school year with the opportunity to buy the 2020-2021 yearbook. So today we have a table set up with um, Art Solomon as our photographer and they're here to take portraits for students and faculty. Um, so at our table we have little cards that students sign up with the photographer and yearbooks for sale if students bought last year's yearbook they can pick it up today or they can pre-order the book we are making for this academic year. This year's Palladium theme, Back to the Basics, focuses on featuring aspects from the original Troy University yearbooks and they are encouraging every student to get their picture taken so they can have a memory to look back on for years to come. Palladium's theme this year is Back to the Basics. Um, so it's the year of the book is 2022 and the original Palladium came out in 1912. So we're taking it way back to our origins and looking at some of the style decisions that they made in 1912, back before all of the computer programs and designing programs were um, a thing. If you missed picture day, there's still time to be featured in this year's Palladium. You can download Yearbook Snap from the App Store, type in Troy University in the school name section, and submit the password Trojans2022 to start uploading your pictures. And you can submit photos from your phone. So if you have a portrait you want in the yearbook, you can submit a portrait and you'll put portrait for the yearbook. Or if you have pictures from any event you attended on campus, you can submit those to the yearbook as well. We're going to take a short break, but when we return, we'll see how Troy University's International Arts Center is bringing attention to the work of a Troy art professor. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. We all dream, but dreams quickly become distant memories unless we do something about it. Do everything in our power to learn to lead. At Troy University, we offer leadership opportunities from day one. We're dedicated to teaching a new generation to lead change. Do you have what it takes to change the world? Looks like it's done. Don't let salmonella get funky with your chicken. On average, one in six Americans will get a foodborne illness this year. You can't see these microbes, but they might be there. So learn the right temperature to cook each type of meat. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. University's International Arts Center is known for bringing in exhibits from artists from all over the world. However, one of its current exhibits comes from an artist located across campus. Claudia Peppenhorst gives us a look. The International Arts Center is now home to a new exhibit featuring artwork from Troy University art and photography professor Will Jacks. The exhibit, Absolute Rest, focuses on non-traditional photography and how Jacks took a new approach to the medium. This exhibit is called Absolute Rest and it is a collection of work by our newly hired photography professor on campus, uh, Will Jacks. And it is um, an exploration into, into photography and different ways to approach it. He, he is 
a very talented uh, traditional photographer, but in this particular series, he dives into uh, examining a new way of presenting uh, and some, a different technique. The exhibit is considered photography, but the content is not actually created through the use of a camera. Working with traditional analog techniques, Jax was able to explore this new medium and expose others interested in photography to it as well. They're also made without cameras. Uh, photography at its core is just writing with light. And so this work is kind of a bridge between uh, traditional printmaking, uh, not just photographic printmaking, but other forms of printmaking and lens-based photography. And so I was very interested in exploring and kind of pushing the boundaries of what photography can be and is and has been traditionally assumed to be. Through this exhibit, Jax hopes he can inspire other photographers to always think of different approaches and ideas about photography. I hope that they look at this work and begin to open a small little space in their minds to realize that um, that photography is maybe has more possibilities than what they've always assumed it to have and if you can open that little space specific to photography then where might you be able to open that space for other aspects of your life claudia peppenhorst troy trojan vision news a Montgomery-based Troy alumnus brought his artwork to the city of Troy this week. The Johnson Center for the Arts will host a display of work from artist Madison Fail. Taylor Wayman gives us a look. For Troy alum Madison Fail, art is a passion that came naturally. His focus? Realism. Through Fail's paintings, he captures imagery of people, animals, and other forms of art that shed a light on life. I love capturing uh, a, um, a thing, a person, an animal, uh, an emotion, um, and I love being able to do that in a realistic way. Um, I think that's lost a lot in this day and age, um, but my grandmother always said that, you know, good will always be good, so I love to, I just love to paint realistically. I've always loved it. I love being able to capture something that's real, um, even if that's from a photograph or from life. Though not always bright and happy paintings, they're real. They share the reality of the darkness we all face throughout our journey. There's a, a little bit of a darkness to them, which is fine, which I've always, which has always been there, um, which I uh, enjoy. Um, I try to be a bright, happy person, but uh, that doesn't always come out in the work. Um, so I think that there's a, a I was very interested in theater when I was at Troy, so um, my mother was a ballet teacher, so I grew up in the theater, and I've always thought there was a slight theatricality to some of them, um, so I think that's part of it as well. Some paintings are known for their beauty. Other paintings are known for their historic value. Madison Fail likes to trigger emotion in his paintings that brings real pieces to life. Um, I've always painted. My grandmother was a portrait painter, so I started off painting from life, from people. Um, while I was at Troy, I only painted from people and uh, figure drawing, portrait painting. Um, so that's just really what I've always focused on. Um, I've ventured off into abstraction and more conceptual stuff, but it always kind of comes home to figurative painting realism. Taylor Wayman, Troy Trojan Vision News. Valentine's Day was a little over a week ago, and while there's no one way to celebrate the day, it's a holiday that's celebrated in a variety of different ways around the world. Troy's International Students Cultural Organization had some fun quizzing students about how the holiday is celebrated in different countries. Amelia Harrell has the story. On Thursday the 17th, ISCA celebrated a late Valentine's Day by holding a trivia night with questions about Valentine's Day all around the world for both international and domestic students who enjoy. So with Valentine's Day being Monday, we really like the idea of doing something Valentine's Day themed. Uh, it took a while to kind of come to the trivia night um, idea simply because we were wanting to do something that was really truly international because when we looked at it, Valentine's Day is not only an American celebration. Um, many other countries and cultures celebrate it worldwide. 
These questions range from U.S. pop culture to holidays around the world. Students work together in teams with a variety of backgrounds to answer the questions for points. Students with the most points at the end of the trivia night won a sweet and savory prize, which included some known treats from different countries and some U.S. favorites. We chose trivia night because it's, it's a fun way to get people interactive and interested, and uh, especially when you bribe them with prizes. It's, it makes a, the competition really fun. And um, we were able to research a little bit and figure out exactly how other countries and cultures celebrate Valentine's Day. And if they don't celebrate Valentine's Day exactly, what do they celebrate instead? Or how do they celebrate instead? I feel like ISCO helps both international and domestic students because it's kind of that breeding ground where people can have good networking and also have good friendships because friendships are very important in our lives, whether it's for somebody you've known for years in your small hometown or somebody you met in a college classroom for two days. Friendships are very important, and so I feel like ISCO kind of brings that not just nationally but globally as well. Amelia Harrell, Troy Trojan Vision News. We're going to take another quick break, but when we come back, a Troy sorority spends the weekend working to fight child abuse. That's coming up right after this, so stay tuned. We all dream, but dreams quickly become distant memories unless we do something about it. Do everything in our power to learn to lead. At Troy University, we teach everyone to be leaders in their field. We're dedicated to teaching a new generation to lead change. Mama. Mama. See mama. mama. Yeah. I don't know how to tell you this, but I'm almost two now. I'm still not responding. That's one sign of a communication disorder and delaying treatment can affect my development. Many parents aren't aware of the early signs of speech, language, and hearing disorders, yet early detection and treatment can improve quality of life. Say dada. Ugh, here we go. Identify the signs of communication disorders. Last weekend, Kappa Delta Sorority wrapped up a week's worth of fundraising activities with an event that added a little color in the lives of some area runners. Amelia Harrell has the story. The Kappa Delta Shamrock Run on Saturday 19th was a colorful ending to the sorority Shamrock Week. This week was dedicated to raising money for KD's philanthropies, bringing fun events to the Troy community as well. The event consisted of a 5K run along a hiking trail at the new Troy Recreational Center. There was also a fun run for people to continue their colorful adventure after they had completed the 5K. This color run is a part of our Shamrock Week, and um, the whole week we raise money and awareness for our philanthropy to prevent childhood abuse in America. And the really cool thing is that 20% of the proceeds will go to the National Prevent Childhood Abuse America, but 80% stays local right here in Troy and goes towards, to the Pike Regional Child Advocacy Center. The Shamrock Run was enjoyed by people all over Troy, from fellow students at Troy University to young children and their families, and even to the older folks within the Troy community. There was even some of our furry friends that decided to take part, donning the colors on their fur instead of a shirt provided by Kappa Delta. The girls at Kappa Delta enjoyed the event as well, throwing color onto passerbys and sometimes on each other. A few of them were also stationed to provide encouragement to the runners. I love it. This is my second year doing it. I think it's just really fun to like, see everybody come out here and just like have a good time and like, really like, put their like, full heart and like, just doing the run, like putting their heart into like, our philanthropy and everything. So I'm really thankful for it. It was very fun. Um, we are so thankful for our community, our friends and family for coming out and supporting such a great cause. Last year for Kappa Delta Shamrock Week, they had raised around $57,000 for preventing childhood abuse in America. As of Saturday, the amount raised this year is still a surprise for KD to reveal at the end of their philanthropy week. One thing is for sure, the Shamrock Run was no ordinary walk in the park. Amelia Harrell, Troy Trojan Vision News. And that wasn't the only fundraising event Kappa Delta had going on last weekend. They kick off the weekend with a night of music, food, and fun, all in the name of helping local children. Kaylee Wright has that story. Family, friends, and students alike congregated on Sorority Hill on Friday night to listen to music, eat food, and socialize at Kappa Delta's Shamrock and Roll. 
The event was put on to support and bring awareness to the sorority's philanthropy, Prevent Childhood Abuse America. In addition to helping children nationally, they also help children at a local level. Philanthropy is important because 80% of the money that we raise stays local here in Troy, and that's something I think is really special because, no, we don't get to interact with the kids because of, like, confidential reasons, but we get to see the difference that our money makes and helping with the Pike County uh, CAC, getting to just work hand-in-hand -hand with them, it just, it just means a lot to us and to our sorority as a whole. So. Kappa Delta helps children in more ways than one. In addition to raising money for Prevent Child Abuse America, they also serve as mentors for the Girl Scouts. Um, along with helping prevent child abuse America, we also do the Girl Scouts of the USA. So that's kind of like our second point to be. So we get to do badge days and help the Girl Scouts here in Troy too. And just again, just showing how local our philanthropy is. Like just getting to work hands on with the Girl Scouts and just getting to see the difference that we make in their lives and instill confidence in them is just a really cool thing also. In addition to the fun and festivities, KD also announced their Shamrock King that evening. So for our Shamrock King, each um, fraternity nominated a boy to run. And throughout the week, that boy raised money for our philanthropies. They came to our spirit nights that we hosted and anything in between. Um, they helped us set up some of these events. And so they've just been a really, really big help this week and uh, we appreciate them. Um, the boy who won went above and beyond. He helped us set up this morning. He's going to help us set up for the run. Um, he raised a total of $1,846 to go towards Prevent Childhood Abuse America and that is Jacob Shiver. Just a little message for everybody, if, you, if you're passionate about something or passionate about somebody's philanthropy or a club or anything, just go above and beyond and do all you can to help give back because it's, it means a lot to the people and the organizations if you just be there and just, just to help them out. It's time for our last break, but when we return, we'll have the rundown of an action-packed weekend of Georgia sports. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. We all dream, but dreams quickly become distant memories unless we do something about it. Do everything in our power to learn to lead. At Troy University, we teach everyone to be leaders in their field. We're dedicated to teaching a new generation to lead change. For over 70 years, Smokey Bear has asked you to use fire responsibly. Fire is due to an unattended campfire. Go time. Here's how you can stay on the front lines of preventing wildfires. Always watch your campfire before leaving. Drown it, stir it, drown it again, and feel that the fire is out cold. Oh. Bullseye! And you won't need a visit from these guys. Copy that. You can be Smokey's wingman when enjoying nature and prevent wildfires. Visit SmokeyBear.com for more fire prevention tips. The Trojan baseball team kicked off the Schuyler Mead era with a sweep of the Holy Cross Crusaders. DeAndre Larkin has more on the team's season's opening weekend. And just like that, the Trojans return to the diamond with a clean sweep and a new 4-0 starting record, beating out the Holy Cross Crusaders 8-0 on Sunday. However, with this new recipe for success, the Holy Cross Crusaders got more than just a little taste. It was, I mean, good weekend. You know, you're always a little worried about how much, you know, having enough pitching when you got 36 innings. But, you know, the pitching staff did really well. Offensively, we turned the corner after the, you know, jitters the first night. And we played great defense throughout, which we're more than capable of doing. So I'm glad to see it translate to, you know, to the field. Senior third baseman Easton Kirk with two RBIs and a home run explains how even though the change in coaching doesn't stop the legacy they plan to keep going with head coach Skylar Mead and the rest of the Trojans. It's helped me out a lot. He come in and he's gotten really close with me since he's been here. And he just has a bunch of confidence in everybody on the team. So I think every player that's here really loves him and he really cares about all of us. And I think that really helps a lot going into a season where your coach, he'll ride for you and you know he'll do anything for you. I think that helps you a lot when you're playing. But it's gonna continue to be like for years with Coach Mead here now. And so that's what, I mean, we don't have many seniors, but all of us, we try to just bust our tails every day at practice and just show the younger guys how we've got to do this for so long. Up next, the Trojans will play the Auburn Tigers at Auburn University for their first midweek game of the season. 
DeAndre Larkin, Troy, Trojan Vision Sports. The Trojan softball team narrowly missed a sweep of the Ole Miss Rebels in last weekend's Troy Invitational. Simon Schusler has the results from Sunday's final game. The Trojan softball team entered the last game of the Troy Invitational Sunday on a nine-game winning streak and looked to stay hot against a team they had beaten the day before in Ole Miss. Leanna Johnson started the day off on the mound for the Trojans, but only survived two innings after giving up an earned run and two walks. The Trojans cycled through two other pitchers in the third, and by the time the inning came to a close, the Trojans found themselves in a hole down 5 to nothing. Troy would tack on a run in the fourth thanks to a solo shot by Ansley Finch, but Ole Miss was able to answer, scoring a run in both the fourth and fifth innings, giving the Rebels a 7-1 to one lead midway through the game. Today, um, because they had seen Leanna had been through the lineup multiple times, we changed it and we did not make plays behind our other pitchers. And we have to make plays behind other pitchers. If you thought the game was all but over after the Rebels gained a six-run lead, you probably weren't alone. But Troy had other plans. The fifth inning was especially kind to the Trojans as they were sparked by a three-run Kelly Horn bomb and a Jade Sennis RBI to bring the Trojans within two. Well, I actually swung out of my shoes on the first pitch and completely missed it, so I had to kind of back it down a little bit. Um, I knew that girl was going up and in pretty hard, and she had some good velo on her, and she's a very good pitcher, so that's just what I was looking for. I was looking for in, and that's what I got. The sixth inning brought the Trojans even closer. Despite giving up a run in the top of the inning, the Trojans would tack on two in the bottom of the sixth to put the score at 8-7. to seven. Unfortunately for Troy, however, that score would remain unchanged as the scoreless final inning gave the Trojans their second loss of the season. Yeah, we always focus on in practice and then through the fall just to be very, very gritty and to never give up on the late innings. That's where we pride ourselves is winning the late innings and, you know, whether that's pitching and defense or hitting. But, yeah, we had full confidence in each other that we're actually putting some pretty good swings on that girl. And then we forced her out, got another one and put some good swings on her. But, yeah, overall just a good day. But... You know, couldn't get it done at the end there. Simon Schusler, Troy, Trojan Vision Sports. And the women's basketball team played their final home game of the season last Saturday against Georgia Southern. Jacqueline Lambert has the highlights from the exciting matchup against the Eagles. The women's basketball team recognizes 10 seniors before what was the last home game of the season for the Trojans against Georgia Southern. It's a great night in Trojan Arena. Um, it's bittersweet because we are losing at least five seniors and we wanted them to go out well and we struggled so hard in the first half. We couldn't make shots. Uh, one time I looked at the stat sheet, we were shooting 9%, but the players did what it took. The Trojans gained control of the game early on, taking a 13-1 to lead over the Eagles, but Georgia Southern would come back after the Trojans were shooting 17%. The Eagles would lead 18 to 17 going into the second quarter. Georgia Southern would remain in control going up by as many as 10 points, but Troy would cut it to a two point lead with the score being 39 to 37, favoring the Eagles into the half. Out of halftime, things stayed the same at the beginning of the quarter for the Eagles holding on to their lead while Troy would respond, keeping the game close with Georgia Southern leading by two with a little over five minutes left in the third. The turning point of the game for the Trojans would come shortly after when they tied things up at 49 before senior guard Tia Johnson scored a contested three, resulting in a foul plus a successful trip to the free throw line, making it a four point play with the Trojans taking the lead. And then in the second half, the, the lid came off for some of our guards. It started with Tina, I mean with Tia Johnson who made the corner three and got fouled. She's nobody's been in the gym more than she has and deserves to make shots, but she's been struggling to make shots and we feel like the lid came off for her and that kind of opened it up for other guards to score. From there, Troy never let the lead go and spoiled any chance of a comeback by the Eagles at the free throw line making six consecutive free throws, beating Georgia Southern 82 to 70 in their final home game of the season. Some of the highlights of the game came in the Trojans' rebounding numbers with 71, the most in the nation for any Division I team against another D1 team this season. Felmas Karanga accounted for 24 of those rebounds on her own. Felmas got 24 rebounds. Tina Stevens had a double-double getting 12 rebounds. So they understand that if we're not shooting well, we got to rebound more, and that's what they were doing. And the Trojans ended their week winning the Sunbelt Conference Championship after defending Ab State. Congrats to the women. And that is the week that was. To find out what's happening on a daily basis, you can tune in to Troy Trojan Vision News at 8.30.
5, 6.30, and 10.30, Monday through Friday. Or you can visit us anytime on the North new Trojan Vision News blog at today.troy.edu slash Trojan Vision. Have a good week.